I'm really excited. We've got a special guest here, Star Hansen. And she's a professional organizer. She's an author. She's been on all kinds of TV shows. She's been on podcasts all over the country. And she's here today to share with us some really interesting secrets about ways that we can become healthier by organizing our stuff. So hello and welcome, Star. Oh, it's so good to be here with you, Angela. Thanks for having me. One of the things that I've discovered is when you have that conversation, like what do I need in my shower? Is it the box cutter and is it the spatula and all the things? Once you have that conversation with yourself, one of the things that I've discovered is a lot of the unconscious holdings that we have on things go away. I know that when I had the conversation with myself about all the shampoo and I realized I was saving some for other people that don't actually live in my house anymore, I was like, wait a second, I don't need to do that anymore. And so all the bottles went away. I ended up using them all. And every time I used them, I was like, yes, I used another one. And then until they were all gone and there was only one. And then as it runs out and there's only a little bit left, now I'm like, oh, I should get some more. And the good news is I work out at a gym that's right near a Walmart. And so any day I can just stop by the Walmart on the way home from the gym and I can get what I need, which has stopped me from buying one for now and one for later, right? I don't need it. I'm going to let Walmart store it for me in the event that I need some on the way home from the gym. I'll just pick it up. I'll throw it up on my shopping list. And so it's changed the way that I do things because I had that conversation with myself. And I think sometimes we just do stuff and we don't really even pay attention. Why? I don't think it's any intention of, oh, I want to hoard 30 bottles of shampoo or I want to save them or whatever. It's just an unconscious thing that we just we don't even know why we do it. And for some people, like it sounds like you were really ready to release that pattern from your life, but some people aren't because their siblings may not be here anymore and they may feel mm-hmm. closer to them. So it could be that you shift and maybe that box cutter, you write the name of all your siblings on it mm-hmm. in Sharpie. And then every time you use that Sharpie, you still feel their presence with you and no one else needs to know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. That's just you saying, I'm going to inc- include my siblings in this part of my life because I can feel the heart radiating off of you, Angela, when you talk about this. So it's like, how can you include that beautiful connection? Because here's the thing about about clutter. If we are using clutter to connect or as protection or as a communication, if we stop using clutter in that way, it's only going to manifest in another way unless we get that need met more directly. So we don't want to abandon your connection with your siblings because you have a lifetime of experience around doing that. So what are some creative ways where you can feel like there's something so beautiful about 19 kids coming together to look out for each other, to love each other, to give each other the next thing. One of my favorite memories is like having partners who give me the best version of whatever it is. Here's the best salad start. It makes me want to be more generous and it infuses my life with generosity versus the partners that I've had who take the best one and they want the best Mm -hmm. one. I'm like, it makes me feel more restrictive, lack, scarcity, a little more stingy. So inviting that energy in like, how do I include my siblings still? Because that is blissful, even though I don't, and I want to do that without 20 bottles of shampoo. That's a really fair question. And to answer your question, how do you continue to love your siblings without the 30 bottles of shampoo? The answer is a Zoom call. Mm -hmm. And during the pandemic, my family was like everyone else issued to stay at home. And so we weren't able to see each other. My family is scattered now all across the United States. And so in order for us to connect, we did the Zoom call. And this is the global awareness. The world entirely at once became aware of cameras on computers and a face-to-face conversation. When we met, and we usually just met once a year for a reunion, and it was a bunch of chaos, uh, all the kids and all their kids now just kind of running around and you'd start a conversation with somebody and you'd be interrupted by their kids and you never got to finish the conversations or anything What we decided is one Sunday, every Sunday for one hour, we would meet on Zoom. We did this all during the pandemic and the families would show up. So we got like 10 or 15 screens going on where all the families and all the kids, grandkids are all gathered around the screen and it's face forward. Mm -hmm. So it's not somebody talking behind your shoulder. It's not somebody over in the corner whispering about you. It's everybody face forward for one hour. I'm going to give you my best for one hour. And it was always optional. People could come or go. And what the cool part is, if you got a really messy house behind you, you can like blur the screen and you no, can God. show off with just your face, right? But what it said was, we grew up together, but do we want to be friends now as adults by choice? Do we want to come back together? And do we still want a connection? 
And it was a revolving cast of characters because week after week, Sunday after Sunday, different members of the family would show up. Sometimes it was three people. Sometimes it was 15. Sometimes it was 10. Sometimes it was six. It just, and, and there was never an obligation. But when the pandemic kind of ended, everybody said, hey, can we still meet on Sundays? So here it is all the years later. And on Sunday still, every single Sunday for one hour, we all meet face to face. And what's really cool about that is nobody has to prove anything. There are no judgments. But if somebody wants to show up authentically who they are, and what's really cool is this. We talk about how some of the things trap us and how we haven't worked through them. And so we're hanging on for dear life to the things because it gives us comfort because we haven't resolved some of those issues. In the beginning, and I'll be truthful with you, it took about six months. Six months of everybody doing, hi, how you doing? Everything's okay. And at the end of the call, I never hung up. I was always the last one on the call and it was my business account. So I, I was the first to sign on and the last to leave, but I always hung on. And if there was somebody that was still on the call, I say, is there anything I forgot to ask or anything that you want to share? We started having some deeper conversations and sometimes two or three people would kind of linger and they would hang on after the call was technically over and we stopped the recording because we recorded it for family members that wanted to watch. But what was interesting is we started to unpeel those layers. It was like group therapy, where there was a little bit of healing that kind of happened about things that were unresolved. And as we started to resolve some of those issues, other things in the background of our lives started to heal themselves. And so how do we deal with family members that we're not close to and that we're embarrassed to invite over, or we're embarrassed to go to their house, or they're embarrassed to have us? Is it possible this holiday season, if nothing else, if you made a Zoom call and you just reconnected and said, hey, I'm having a Zoom call on a certain day at a certain time, if you would like to show up, I'd love to say hi. Nothing else with no expectation, no judgments, no nothing. You don't have to clean the house for people to come if they're not coming over, but you could meet them face to face and you could reconnect. And I'm going to tell you how powerful it's been because right now there are little kids in my family that when I moved away from home, they were five, six, seven years old, and I never did know them very well. And now as adults, some of us are working together. Some of us have podcasts together. Some of us have reconnected as adults because we are now friends by choice. Yes, we're related, but we are friends by choice. That's beautiful. So beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, this has been an amazing conversation. I want to say thanks so much. But in closing, Star, will you tell our listeners where they can go to find you? Absolutely. One of the places that I've created for you is to go to starhansen.com forward slash podcast. And that's H-A-N-S-E-N. -E and on my website, I have a ton of free resources for you to dip your toe in. I'm also on all major social platforms. So come hang out with me, ask me questions and show up. It would be great to say hi to those who've watched this and listened in. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you, Angela.